Thank you so much for joining us today for this very special Monday Brief. I thank God that we are able to come to you live right from here. And uh, I want to believe that you are going to be immensely blessed today by what God is just about to speak to us. Thank you, those of you who are in diaspora, those of you who are here in this country, in Kiambu, we just bless the fact that we are able to come to you to be a blessing, just like you are a blessing to us. Let's pray for the word. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We thank you for the now word in Jesus' name. Amen. Yesterday, I started to talk about the parable of the lost coin. And we said yesterday that that was not just an ordinary coin. This is in, from the book of Luke chapter 15. And, you know, the, the kind of coin that was lost was a very, very precious coin. And that's that woman spared no effort to try and get it. And when she found it, she had a great, great celebration. We talked about the fact that a Jewish woman, when she is engaged, betrothed, when she is to be married, or when she was to be married, even there was a headband that she was given. Same like we do when we give our girls the engagement ring. And it had ten coins. And if by any chance one of those coins got lost, my goodness, my goodness, she did everything to get it back. I want you to spare some time, I'm requesting you kindly, to visit our channels, Facebook, YouTube, and get the whole message so that even as we continue with this one, you will be able to get the whole package. It was power packed. And we said something that was very, very important yesterday. That that lock coin was lost in the house. We said the sheep was lost in the field. But the coin was lost in the house. And today, I want to show you something along that, uh, with that from the book of Luke, chapter 2. Because, oh my goodness, let me read the scripture first. Verse 41. I'm, I'm reading from New Living Translation. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss, miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up, that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him. There, three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. 
or who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, Why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been a frantic searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search? He asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's business? In my father's house, sorry. But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them, and he was obedient to them, and his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature, and in favor with God and all people. Now watch this. The greatest tragedy today is the tragedy of going through religious motions. We said the coin was lost in the house. Let's look at this scripture. Every year, right from birth, Jesus would go for the Passover feast or festival to Jerusalem with the parents. I thank God that the parents were godly. Not every family went with everybody, but here we find Joseph and Mary, they are going as a family. Every single year. I'll say again, every single year, all those years. And I want you to imagine that we go to church every single Sunday, midweek services, we go there. Just like this family went. The next thing you find is that the Passover was slaughtered one day. And then seven days would follow the feast of the unrivened bread. And this is what I want you to see. The Bible comes and says, Mary and Joseph, having fulfilled all the days, they fulfilled all the days. By the way, ordinarily the first and the second day were the most important. And many people left after that. But this family stayed all the days. What am I talking about? We go to church and we fulfill all the obligations of the church. We do what we are instructed to do. I mean, if it comes to the Holy Communion, we are there. Baptism, we are there. When it comes to tithing, maybe we are there. I mean, when it comes to development fund. We participate in that. We even sometimes go on missions. I mean, we fulfill the religious obligations. But the Bible says, after they fulfilled the religious obligations, they started to go home. I mean, from Jerusalem to Nazareth, people traveled in groups. And that's why you find... I mean, they are moving together. And as they moved together, the Bible comes and says, third day, you know, they realize, they realize, oh my, he's not with us. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They have traveled in groups. Usually, uh, the women and the children will go ahead and then the men would follow. Jesus, after they traveled and found that they cannot see Jesus, they were worried. They started looking around. They started and they say, where is he? We can't find him. 
So this Mary and Joseph, they start to go back. They are going back to Jerusalem to find, to look for the boy, so to speak. He is 12 years old. He's a teen. Now, watch this. The Bible tells me that when they came, they found him in the house. Imagine, they found him right where they left him. There's something I want you to see here. They fulfilled the religious obligations. They fulfilled the days. But they left the person, the days signified in the house. I just want you to imagine, even during that sacrifice of the lamb, they were carrying the lambs to go and sacrifice. And Jesus, the lamb of God, is in the house. They do not recognize him. Mary and Joseph, they lose Jesus. They leave him right in the house. I'm going to say again, the greatest tragedy we have today, today, is people go to church every Sunday. They go to church every Wednesday. They go to seminars. They go to conferences. But, my, my, but many leave Jesus right there. They hear the word because Jesus is the word. But they leave the word right there in the church. They hear the word of instruction. They even get excited over that word. They hear a prophetic word. Get excited over it. But after that, they leave it right there. By the time they leave the gates of the church or the door of the church, they are not committed to go and do what the word says. They are not serious about obeying the instructions. They leave the person of the word right in the church. And that's why there's a lot of I'm in a bankruptcy. That's, that, that, that's why there is a lot of dryness. Because we went for the festival, but the very person of the festival, we leave him in the house. We go several days journey, sometimes two days, sometimes three days. We come back. When we come back, the person of this festival is still in the church. We leave the church. And when we leave the church, what do we do? Everything we had, the word that we had, the correction we had, is left in the house and we go back empty. It's like this coin which was lost in the house. Luke 15 from verse 8. The word is lost in the church. It's left there. We go through religious motions. God talks to you about fasting. That word is left there. I want you to remember, faith without actions is dead. God talks to you about going to talk to a backslider or somebody who does not know Jesus. In the church, you even weep over those people. 
I mean you cry. You promise yourself to go and do it. But immediately after you leave the church, that word is left there. What am I talking about? The coin was left lost in the house. Jesus was left in the temple. It is very vital that you and me know that a personal relationship with God requires intentional, intentional pursuit. We got to be intentional in pursuing God, not rituals. I still remember when I was a young boy and some people would say, I'm just waiting because the service begins at 10. I'll wait for the praise and worship to go. I know the preacher will be standing around 11, 15, 11, 11, 30. So I just want to go and hear the word. And when I hear the word, I give my offering and go. Some people even used to send other believers with their offerings. Please, I will not be able to go there today. I just want you to take my offering and go and put it in the offering box. Rituals. Performance of, you know, performance of our obligations. But the personal, intentional pursuit of God is missing. It's lost in the house. What am I talking about? It is the high time that you and me become more intentional in our pursuit of God. There are several reasons why we read the Bible. Some people read the Bible, you know, and they take the word as medicine. That's good. In other words, to them, the word is medicino. They get one promise today. Tomorrow they will get another promise, one or two or three. They are just pursuing promises and that's it. They are just pursuing a word to help them in their troubles. That's it. Some people read the word devotionally. What does that mean? Every day, a chapter or several verses or some even people, some people even read a certain book in the Bible. That's good. No question about that. Please listen to this. Some people, especially ministers of the gospel, they read the word for others. In other words, they just go to look for the word, I mean, for the word that they will preach to other people tomorrow or maybe next week. I mean, they are there reading the word for others. All this is not bad by itself. But the most important thing is for you and for me to read the word so that our relationship with God can become better. In other words, I'm reading the word, I'm studying the word to know God. It's God I want. It's God I'm pursuing. I'm not just, I'm not just reading it for the sake of other people. I want to pursue God. I don't want God, I mean, Jesus lost in my ministry. I am ministering, but Jesus is lost in between there. I don't have time to listen to him. The Bible comes and says he was, he, he stayed in the temple. We got to tarry in the temple with him. They are teachers of the law. You know, that tarried with him. They were there 
Of course, it used to happen during the time of those festivals. And even in other days, you know, people would gather in the groups and discuss the word. Jesus tarried in the temple. He tarried. The word is tarried. We are so much in hurry. We are so much in hurry. Unless we spend good time in the presence of God, we will not tap into his wisdom. May God help you. May God help me. That the coin is not lost in the house. Jesus is not lost in the temple. He's not lost, you know, somewhere in our religious obligations. May God help us to have very intimate relationship with Jesus. May God help us to have very intimate relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Because that's, that's what matters. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. Once again, I request you. Somebody needs this message. Subscribe to our, help them to subscribe to our channels. If you have not, please do. And uh, share this message with somebody else. If you drop a comment or just hit that bar on like, I mean, you'll be blessed of God. See you on Wednesday. God bless you.